really appreciate you saying that because I would have been jabbering away to nobody. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Lakeland Rotary Club. My name is Joel Ivey, and I'm so glad you could join us. Uh, at this point, I would like to ask Stacy Campbell Dominic to lead us in the Invocation Pledge of Allegiance and to recite the four way test. Stacy is the CEO of Career Source Polk. She's on the board of directors and she's a three year Rotarian. Stacy, would you lead us in the invocation, please? Can't hear you yet. Do you know sign language? One second, she says, I do know that sign language. Technology is failing us. <laughs> One thing we do know about Stacy is that she's a determined woman. She'll pull this off. She's muted by the host. Amanda, is that a thing you can fix? It doesn't show muted on my screen. She shows unmuted. Okay. I'll try. But Stacy, now you show muted. There you go. Yep. Still, still can't hear you. I, I think she doesn't have a microphone connected to her computer. Well, let's try something else. Mr. Mayor, I heard your voice. Would you mind leading us in an invocation real quick? It would be my privilege. Thank Father, you, we sir. thank you for the privilege of being able to participate in this club. We look at each of the lives on the screen and we realize how you have used them in mighty ways and in individual lives of other people ways that we know about um, and many ways we, in most ways we don't know about, but you do. We thank you for giving us the privilege of being particularly in this season, ultra aware of the way people feel isolated and we pray for wisdom as a club and as individuals and to how you can continue to use us in a way that makes you smile. We ask for your blessing on this time together now in your precious name we pray, amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did you hear me that time? Yes, yes. ma'am. <laughs> I bet you want to, I bet you're thinking I wanted to get out of that invocation, but I promise you I didn't. Can you can you carry on with the Pledge of Allegiance then? It would be my pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag yeah. of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic for, for which, which it stands, stands one, one nation under God, God indivisible. indivisible. With liberty, with liberty and, and justice for all. And the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Thank you for your determination, for hanging in there. We appreciate it, Stacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, at this point, Trey, can we go through the introduction of guests and visiting Rotarians? I think we have a few. I think Trey is not here. I didn't see him hop on, and he asked me to just fill in for him because he had a mediation. Wasn't sure if it was going to be done in time. Very good. So Thanks. I will um, let Sushil introduce her guest because I know she has one today. Yes. 
I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Wazel Dokur. Uh, I met Wazel when I was in need of learning how to uh, do Zoom. So a, a good friend of mine introduced me to him and we've become good, good buddies. He is a, a brilliant uh, individual. Um, Wazel is a senior infrastructure engineer currently doing contract work for companies worldwide. He worked for Franklin Templeton in St. Pete for 15 years, but like many of us, uh, COVID now has him working from home. Please welcome Basil to our meeting today. Welcome, Basil. And I know we're going to welcome our uh, guest speaker today, Steve Bissonette from Visti. Hi, Steve. Uh, I know that Doug McCall is here, our visiting Rotarian from England. Hi, Doug. Hi, all. And um, did you want to introduce Mark uh, Michael Huff? You bet. Yes, I'd like to introduce my, my good friend Mark Miller. Uh, he's been to a meeting or two, and hopefully when we get back together face-to-face, -face, we'll be able to get him in the club. Uh, hello, this is uh, Don Selvage. I have two guests that are somewhere in the pipeline of joining our club. Uh, Carol Hornsby is uh, uh, a guest. I think she's uh, waiting rotary information and John Lout. So uh, I guess technically they're still guests, but please welcome uh, both. Thank you. Anyone else visiting Rotarian or guests today? Okay, hearing none, I'll hand it back to you, President. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And Don, I do believe we're going to be putting together a rotary information, hopefully this month, if not early next month. So thank you. Um, so at this point, we'll move into happy dollars. Does anyone have a happy dollar announcement that you would like to make? If so, please unmute yourself and speak up. I have a happy dollar okay. Um, okay. announcement. Um, I'll be retiring at the end of this year, so my last day will be December 11th. That really is a happy one. Yes, it is. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Anybody else? Happy dollar? I have a happy dollar, uh, okay. or two. Um, our project for Magnolia um, is going along, along amazingly well, and we've got all of the demo pretty much done um we're going to get going to the city with plant finished plans soon and hopefully that'll go through well so if there's anybody that would like to come and see us come see our um come do a walkthrough i'd love to do a hard hat tour and show anybody who's interested or would like to see what we're going doing with our project we're very excited about it or think it's going to be an amazing we've got the outside <laughs> got windows taken out we've got you know it's all opened up and um got big ideas and uh, now that we can see all the big space um, it looks amazing so if anybody call me 863-581-6476 um, and I'll schedule and show you a do a hard hat tour with you I'd love to show off our progress thanks thank you Tammy congratulations on your progress thanks any other happy dollars all right, let's move into our announcements. Uh, I don't know, Tyler, did you make it on? So today is the day to pick up the Visti meal boxes. Uh, that's going to be at the church, at the United Methodist Church in the parking lot, I hope. I know that we're trying to get the boxes to the church from Visti. Uh, so there may be some logistics involved with that, but if you've signed up for the meal boxes, uh, please try to get by there today. Let's get these things picked up and then uh, we can do delivery sometime this month, kind of on your own. Uh, so please be advised that we need to get that moving. Joel, those boxes were picked up uh, by Boring uh, yesterday afternoon, so they should be ready at the church today. Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you all. How convenient to have you on. What, what good timing. Glad to help. <laughs> I have a happy dollar, Joel. This is Arletta. Oh, hey, Arletta. Hey. All right. So as you all probably know, it is Giving Tuesday, which is a national, if not international, um, motion to acknowledge all the nonprofits 
that do such great work. So I'm um, going to do a little plug for Rotary. Today would be a great day to um, participate in Giving Tuesday and make a donation to Rotary. Or the two um, nonprofits that you know are close to my heart, the Imperial Symphony Orchestra or Bonnet Springs Park. Or even our guest speaker today um, from Visti, um, and uh, there's all of the um, nonprofits are, are participating in, in Giving Tuesday. So give big. All the nonprofits really need a lot of extra help. There's a lot of extra need this year, as I'm sure you can imagine. Thank you. All right, thank you, Arletta. Good, good advice. Good words. Uh, Mr. Jim Russell, you want to talk about the Salvation Army bell ringing? Certainly. Here, there's your bell. Um, we are in the bell ringing season. It started as of Saturday at Lake Marion Publix. Um, Tigertown Rotary kicked off. They took the first shift. Uh, don't forget, we start our ringings December 14th. That's a Monday and run through Christmas Eve. Um, I've already had, as of 11.30 this morning, we've had 15 people sign up for shifts. So that only leads leaves 79 slots. So you need to sign up quick before they go get away. And if you don't or can't ring by chance, but you still want to participate, we can always use uh, eight more day captains. That's the folks that call everyone the day before to remind them that they have a shift the following day and to make sure they're going to come and be there. Uh, so all in all, it's moving right along. Uh, Lake One South has got uh, pretty much the rest of this week. They're, they're rolling this morning. And um, just si come online and sign up. All right. Thank you, Jim. Everyone, please get signed up. We always do a good job, and we have a great showing for the bell ringing service that we do. So, so please get online and get signed up. Um, next week, we are going to have Board of Director elections. Um, Beth is going to send out an email. We, we, we did some email blast outs looking for people who would be interested in serving, and we did get 15 or 16, I think it was 15, of people that uh, would like to be considered. So we're going to do a blast out email. This is gonna, not going to be the old fashioned way and I apologize for that, but there's, that's just how it is in this state of affairs. So when you get that email probably next week, please uh, consider the names and return it back to Beth. Uh, if you think someone else should be considered that wasn't on that list, you have the right to put somebody on there. But uh, at this point we do have some eager volunteers and uh, we would like to make sure we can get that election done. That is part of our normal process. We'll conclude the elections in January uh, for the final slate to be considered in January, and we'll have that final vote then to, to see who is actually going to be our new board of directors. So just be looking for that. Uh, any other, oh, Christmas angels. Uh, Beth has been trying to push the Christmas angels and it's just hard to do on email. Uh, we have several that are remaining. There's two ways that you can participate. You can purchase the Christmas angel itself and get the gift. I believe we're delivering this to Julie's place downtown, Julie Townsend. Uh, or you can just donate money directly and let the Salvation Army take care of it from there. Uh, but we would like to get people signed up. It's another online process that... Uh, that I think, or just email Beth directly, and she can help directly direct you on how to get that done. That that needs to happen this week. Beth, anything I need to add to that? No, we do just need to have it um, because those that donate, we need to get the money to the Salvation Army, and they will purchase gifts for us, and they have to actually do the shopping, and we'll send the receipt back to us. But we need to make sure they have it in time. So yes, as soon as possible. Okay, good. Thank you, Beth. Any other announcements? All right, uh, we're going to move on to the program then. Um, Kim, I'm assuming that you're doing the introductions. Kim Brunson? Yes, sir. All right, Kim is our business relationship manager with Publix. She's on the board of directors and is our great program chair this year. She's a seven-year Rotarian. So, Kim, please do the introduction. 
Thank you, President Joel. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Steve Bessonette. He's president of VISTI, Volunteers in Service for the Elderly. Uh, Steve uh, has been the president at VISTI since 2015. He's a resident in Lakeland since 1988. He holds a master's degree in urban and regional planning from Florida State University and worked in city planning for more than 20 years. His local volunteer efforts began in 1990 when he became founding president of the Lakeland Habitat for Humanity. Several years later, he went to work for Habitat Humanity International and was a liaison for local affiliates throughout Georgia, Florida, Alabama, and Puerto Rico. In 2000, Steve returned to work for the city of Lakeland, where he served as assistant director of community development until 2015, when he left that position to join VISTI. Steve is very active in the Lakeland community. He has uh, served many organizations, including Central Florida Speech and Hearing, American Cancer Society, uh, Spring Obsession, Lakeland Habitat for Humanity, and served from 2004 to 2011 um, to the Alafaya River Basin Board for the Southwest Florida Water Management District. Steve's a graduate of Leadership Polk Class 10, Leadership Lakeland Class 9, and was chair elect for Leadership Lakeland Class 28 and chair for Class 29. He also served as Leadership Lakeland uh, President of the Alumni Association. Steve was also recognized by Leadership Lakeland with the Jerry Anus Award in 2014 for Lakeland Humanitat excuse me, um, Habitat for Humanity recognized his community service for their Lifetime Volunteer Award. Steve is going to talk to us today about combating social isolation from a distance. Steve, welcome and thank you for your time. Well, good morning and thank you all very much. Uh, it's really a privilege and an honor, um, and just great to see so many familiar faces. Uh, the um, opportunity to speak with Rotary is one that I have not had for quite a while, so I really appreciate this to be among friends and folks that uh, I know you are already very committed to the work that we do here at VISTI and really to our community at large. So uh, I feel very much at home among you. I have. Uh, shared with some of you that uh, I think fondly of Rotary because of a personal connection I had when I was uh, many years ago uh, living in Clearwater and uh, was able to go to uh, what was then St. Petersburg Junior College on a Rotary scholarship. So um, many years ago, you already were working in our community uh, and I feel like I'm one of the benefactors of your efforts. So thank you for your ongoing work. Um, I, I do not have a PowerPoint presentation for you today. I don't know if that's good news or bad, uh, but I was asked to speak about the impacts of COVID on our work here at VISTI, and certainly um, it, it, there's been a profound impact on the work that we do, and we are very fortunate to be in a position where our community has continued to support this work. Uh, financially, but more importantly, perhaps even um, with the volunteers needed to uh, provide ongoing essential services to almost 2,000 of our seniors that are most at risk at this point in time. So I thought I'd start the conversation uh, talking about the impact first on our seniors. And most of us have parents or grandparents, and we can relate to some of the challenges that they face. But I will tell you that our biggest uh, uh, gut check, our biggest sort of uh, wake up call about all of this was early on in the process. I'm looking at my wall calendar. And it's like, I guess this goes back to early March now. Um, when we started to get phone calls from some of our clients that uh, were very fearful and frankly, very concerned 
wanting to know would we still be able to bring them hot meals or provide them with supplemental groceries or in some cases would we still be available to transport them to their medical appointments uh, we have a number of clients that go three times a week to dialysis and in the absence of having uh, transportation provided uh, they were really really concerned what was going to be their option there so um, so that was kind of for us uh, a gut check time where we had to make a, a renewed commitment to saying even in the uncertainty of how this is going to affect us and how we're going to move forward, we needed to be able to say with confidence that VISTI is going to continue to be here for them. And our litmus test, whether it's sorting canned goods or whether it's providing care directly to our clients, our sort of uh, point of reference is, uh, would, the, would this be okay for my mom? You know, each of us personally, would this be acceptable for my mom? Uh, so it wasn't really conceivable for us to think that if our mom was in need of care, that somehow this, uh, this external uh, threat was going to uh, block our ability to continue to provide that. So a um, lot of fear of the uncertainty and a lot of the uh, social isolation that many of our seniors face on an ongoing basis that just became exacerbated over these past number of months. Um, I've also come to realize, and I'm sure many have as well, that underlying all that we do is really our effort to combat social isolation. But COVID has put a spotlight on the reality that the social isolation is not limited to seniors. Uh, many people have now struggled with being home and being separated from family and friends. And I really want to commend you for continuing as a group to get together over 60 people on the call today. That's, that's a tremendous uh, outreach. I know it's not your full club membership, but it's not the same as being in person. But it's so important that we continue to connect and to find ways to engage each other. Uh, that still provide that, um, that sense of belonging. Um, I know myself, uh, one of my next door neighbors, he has, he and his wife have four grown kids. They're, well, they're teenagers on into uh, starting college age. And uh, recently the father and the, uh, the one boy out of the group, there's three girls and one boy, uh, they, they both contracted COVID. And they were struggling, obviously, uh, staying quarantined. They're probably the most cautious people I know, and yet um, this was something that impacted them. And the father was sharing with me from over the fence in the backyard um, how his son was just really struggling with this. And I think he's 14 years old now, and, and he's just a very, um, you know, outgoing guy. And, and so much so to the point that uh, he asked his dad, whose birthday was the 18th of November, uh, he asked his dad if it was just the two of them in the backyard alone, would, would it be okay if they hugged? It had been five days since he had touched anyone, since he had hugged anyone, even within his own family. So uh, even as he was telling me that story, my heart just broke and, and he was almost in tears recounting that situation and it was just a stark reality that the dynamics of this social isolation can impact people of all ages and uh, and all walks of life so that's something that is a it's an eye-opening experience for us almost every day of the year but i think it's become more commonplace uh, for all of us to realize um, you know there's just a a tremendous value in engaging with people in our community and however that is through volunteer work, through our own professional lives, uh, through our church work, whatever that is that we continue to engage with others in meaningful ways. That's perhaps the most important thing that we can provide each other. Um, as far as VISTI, we have uh, been impacted in many ways and uh, we've been able to uh, uh, I hate to use the word anymore, pivot, uh, but we've been able to reimagine a lot of our program services. Uh, we've been able to adjust our operations. Uh, we've had to literally uh, close the front door to the building and, and um, 
and screen people before they come in, uh, cut back on the volunteers and the number of people in the building. We've had staff that have been furloughed because of a downturn in the calls for transportation. Uh, we've had other staff working from home. Uh, we've had staff that have had to fill in where volunteers were no longer available. Uh, what we have found also is that many of our volunteer base are also retirees. And a lot of them had to step back because of fear of, of their, their risk. Um, we are blessed to have in a typical, you know, BC, you know, before COVID, um, we are blessed to have volunteers that range from elementary school on up all the way into their 70s, 80s, and 90s. And, you know, you start to see where different um, demographics within the population find themselves at risk or everybody dealing with it in their own way and in a wide variety of ways at that. So some have been very faithful and continuing to serve every day. Others have, uh, have really had to step back. Um, so not only our clients have we found that have struggled some with uh, isolation, we have also had a whole sort of unexpected experience of many of our regular volunteers being home, not having this opportunity to come to VISD either every day or twice a week or three times a week, it, it gives them a sense of purpose in that. And in that absence, uh, they were struggling. So although they may not be receiving regular services, um, they found themselves really uh, suddenly in a different place. So one of the things that we've done in addition to our normal um, programs is that we have really expanded what we call phone pals, which are volunteers that call clients once a week and there's no script, they just reach out to them, the same volunteer, the same client. And over time, they develop a real friendship, a relationship, a rapport. Um, they also serve as kind of our early warning uh, you know, signs if, if something's not right. Uh, so many times they really they're no longer VISTI clients, they're, they're personal clients, and they take ownership of that relationship. So we have actually expanded that program now to many of our regular volunteers who are also now getting a call, and we have either staff or other volunteers calling them periodically just to check in and see how they're doing. And we find, again, that that is probably as important as anything else we can do uh, to stay connected even if they don't need our, our actual program services. One of the services that we used to do and we've had to suspend as a result of COVID is uh, the baking, decorating, and distribution of birthday cakes to people that are turning 90 and above. And that's one of the most joyful days around here. Once a month, we would have all these people in here decorating cakes and distributing them and coming back with these wonderful stories of these 90 plus year old people and their, their birthdays. Our eldest um, clients this year, we have two people that turned 106, still living independently in their own home. So you can imagine the excitement and the joy of being able to share birthdays with them. And uh, we, we just found that that's something that we'd love to be able to do and people enjoy that very much but obviously going into a person's home and singing happy birthday is not an option right now so we struggled with how do we stay connected with these folks and one of our volunteers that is a phone pal she would call the client list in advance to ask them if they wanted a, a birthday cake and then make the arrangements for us to have them on the list. We were averaging about 22 cakes a month. She decided to take it upon herself to call all of those clients on their birthday. Now that's averaging around 50 clients a month turning 90 and above. Uh, 22 of them would actually receive a cake. But she came to the realization that, you know, this is affecting everyone. So, she has personally taken on the task of calling every VISTI client on the day of their birthday. That's over 4,300 people. She is now calling some of those people every day, an average of more than 300 a month. 
that's a truly remarkable volunteer commitment. And she did it strictly because she wanted to, but also because she was coming in here every day to work at our front desk as a volunteer. And she said, this gives me meaning. This gives me a sense of purpose. So it continues to be something that she has done now for more than seven months, uh, making those phone calls religiously every day, even on the weekends or holidays. And people have been so blessed by that. Um, I emphasize that not only because it's such a, an incredible story of, of commitment, um, but it underscores we all have something we can do. And it may not seem like a lot to you and me, but I can assure you those phone calls and those gestures of connection are extremely valuable to people who are isolated at this time. We have other programs that we've had to suspend, including our ramp building crew. Uh, we have a number of people that go out and they would build ramps or half-height steps for people that needed access to their homes. For obvious reasons, we suspended that uh, for a period of time. And just this past month, they've begun slowly working on a couple of ramps and steps, uh, but very small projects to limit their exposure. Um, we've been very fortunate to keep up uh, the, on, a, on a reduced scale our transportation, which is primarily to medical appointments. So uh, our transportation requests were reduced by about half during the height of COVID and they've fluctuated back up. They're starting to drop off again. So we did uh, furlough some folks for a period of time who were drivers and they've come back on staff at this point, but uh, we're also working with a lower number of, of overall staff than we had before. Supplemental groceries continue strong. Uh, we have over 1,250 people that receive supplemental groceries every month and uh, volunteers to deliver those. Uh, we've had a big shift in that volunteer base. We've also shifted the way that we provide those. Um, those clients that can drive to Visti's office, we uh, used to have them come into the building and pick items from the shelf. Now everybody stays in their car and we bring the food out to them, we load it into the vehicle for them. Uh, volunteers that come also to deliver to our clients that can't drive here, uh, they also stay in their car and we bring it to them and they drive off. And, and all of our deliveries now are contact free where we deliver to the door, we knock, we call, we try and make that connection at the doorway uh, but uh, limit our interaction and of course we're wearing masks and sometimes gloves depending on what we're handling. Hot Meals also continues uh, twice a week. We distribute about 350 Hot Meals to those that uh, really can't prepare their own food or shouldn't uh, because of their physical or cognitive uh, condition. Um, a shout out to Florida Southern College. Uh, guest Services has continued to prepare food for us for those hot meals. Even when the school was closed down, even through the summer months, they have consistently provided that food for us. I think at times we were their only client, their only customer, uh, but we're very grateful for that. And then First Presbyterian Church um, on Lake Collingsworth, we bring the food and the, the volunteers there to distribute that food. Uh, the church was gracious enough to allow us to uh, continue to work out of their kitchen even when the church was closed for other activities. So again, the community support continues to be strong to allow us to provide those services. Uh, we do have a third party contract to provide in-home care to some folks that need um, light housekeeping or respite care or bathing. And those numbers we have not added to but we've continued to sustain the people that were already on the list. And as you might imagine, the in-home care providers are really struggling to find enough people to provide those services. So we work hand in hand with them as closely as we can to, to meet the needs of those that are, are, are at greatest risk. We also have a, a service for 24 seven emergency monitoring. And again, that's with a third party contractor that provides the equipment and we uh, pay for the uh, cost of that service. So those have remained um, in place throughout. And of course, you know, as you've already mentioned earlier today, uh, 
twice a year, we've been able to do uh, boxes of personal care items and distribute those to clients uh, at the lower end of our income. Uh, 400 of those boxes went out in June, and thanks to your efforts and others in our community, another 400 are going out this month in December. So uh, again, when you look at the boxes, you've done this before as a club. Um, those are daily things that most of us wouldn't think twice about just stopping by the store to pick up. It's not a big deal. But if you are on a fixed limited income, if you can't drive to get to the store, if getting to the store is at risk to your health, uh, those all become much more valuable items. And uh, it's, we're very grateful to you all for, uh, for making those available. And just a, a reminder that as you distribute them, uh, it's to the door. Uh, but your time in contact and you're talking to them safely, uh, your interaction with them to whatever extent that you can do that safely, that's probably even more invaluable than the items in that box. Uh, some of you know that last week we had the uh, opportunity to deliver Thanksgiving meals again. That was our 24th year. And um, it, it wasn't that people were without food as much as it was people needed to have that connection with folks during the holidays. And uh, we're so grateful the community came together. If, if you weren't there, it was kind of like uh, going to the Chick-fil-A drive through on steroids. Uh, we were at the RP Funding Center and everybody again stayed in their vehicle and, and the, the boxes of food, the bags of food, and the uh, plant uh, were, were put into your car. Um, we have as many calls and of appreciation and thank you for the, the decorated bags and the plants as we do for the food themselves. But what people really take away is that interaction. And then I've already talked about the reassurance calls which actually has expanded in its scope over these past months. Um, we have definitely found every day is a new adventure in terms of the volunteer base, who's able to come, who's not able to come. Some period of time we had people that were being furloughed from other jobs that backfilled our volunteer base. We've tried a, um, a partnership with um, DoorDash to deliver food. Uh, with some mixed results, just in terms of the philosophy of how we do what we do. Uh, we've, we've tried a bunch of uh, new things every day to try and keep this uh, going, and we will continue to do that. Uh, but what has really been a shift for us is, is our overall uh, funding. Uh, we've seen a shift in that as well. Uh, we have applied and received a PPP loan to keep operational. We have applied for every CARES Act federal fund grant that was available to us for COVID relief. And that has really helped to carry us through this time. We've had some major donors that have been very generous in stepping forward. At the same time, we have a number of folks that are our regular routine you know, supporters that have had to step back for their own personal reasons and, and the economic impact of the downturn in the economy. So it's really been a shift in all of that. And so grateful for people to be able to give what they can and to be able to see that in the end, we still have the resources that we need to keep going. Uh, what COVID has spotlighted for us is our need to be more forward looking so that when those calls do come and people are concerned about, are we gonna be there tomorrow? That we'll be able to answer definitively yes not only for the next few months, but for the next years and the next generations to come. Uh, you all know the baby boomer generation is, is just starting to turn 70 and will continue to do that for 14 more years and people are living longer. So uh, our commitment is to be here in this community for a long time. And we're looking at all the ways that that means and plays out in terms of our funding base, our staffing, our operational facilities, all of those things that support that on an ongoing basis. So again, let me just wrap up by thanking you all for your ongoing support, for helping to make this possible to continue to serve the seniors in our community that are in need. And just a reminder that we can all be volunteers in service to the elderly. We can all have an eye out for our neighbors and our friends that find themselves somehow in socially isolating circumstances 
it's never too early, it's never too late to make a call, to, to reach out to someone with a text, uh, just to let people know that they haven't been forgotten. Um, I know that's the Rotary way, and I thank you for uh, sharing that as being part of the VISTI way as well. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Steve, just real quick for uh, folks that are going to be delivering the VISTI boxes, can you go through a little bit more? I know you talked about some, but what's permissible, what's not when we're delivering boxes to the people's homes? Yes, thank you. We really ask uh, for this to be what we call a no contact delivery. Uh, it's a smaller box that can easily be uh, put at the doorway. If you present it there and then knock on the door, you should have a list with the uh, client's phone, uh, their name and their phone number, so you could call them as you are approaching their, their home, let them know you you know to expect you. Um, they're expecting something sometime this month. They're not expecting you in person today. So call them in advance, let them know you're coming, and then um, leave the box at the door, but do try and step back uh, and engage them with conversation as much as possible. Some may want to invite you inside. We ask that you refrain from doing that. We do ask that you wear a mask as you talk to them. Um, regardless of your circumstance, these are folks that by definition are at high risk. So please be mindful that we're trying to care for them as much as we are trying to help serve them in this time. Okay, good, thank you. Amanda, do we have any questions in the chat box? There are none in the chat box, but may I ask my own question? Please. Um, Steve, could you describe for anybody who's not familiar with VISTI, um, how one would enroll um, a family member or a, a neighbor in your services and um, I in particular I have a, an elderly aunt who is in her 80s and living alone in Pinellas County. Do you have a, a, an organization like yours in Pinellas and how would I get her hooked up? Great questions. Um, you know volunteers when I when I have the opportunity to welcome people here to our office I, I love to say uh, welcome to the international headquarters of volunteers and service to the elderly, because we are a byproduct of this local community. Uh, we are a visible expression of this community's care, compassion, and generosity. There is no other VISTI on the planet that we're aware of. There is no other organization exactly like ours. We're not part of a network. Um, for those that are outside our community, uh, we refer people to the United Way, um, and you can access that by dialing 211, which is the United Way's um, uh, universal helpline. And you tell them where you're trying to get some help, and they can put you in contact with the resources that are available locally in that community. Uh, for those that are here, our criteria are simply that they're 70 years of age and above, and that they live in Western Polk County. Our service territory is Lakeland, Bartow, Mulberry, and Fort Meade and all the unincorporated areas that surround them. Um, we have, uh, at this point, a, a, a delay, if you would, a waiting list, uh, because of the difficulty of interviewing people uh, that are new to our system. Uh, normally, that's an in-home, in-person process. So we are working to triage those requests over the phone and get as many people into our system as possible. Um, but our process is really one of discerning what their real needs are, uh, which sometimes is, has to be balanced uh, to what their want may be. Uh, I know a lot of people that would want hot meals delivered free to their home twice a week, but not everybody needs that service. And because we are a donor-supported nonprofit, we have to be good stewards of the, those funds. Uh, so we're always trying to meet people at their need and, and, and discern where that meets their want. Um, so they can go online and, uh, and complete an application process. Uh, they can submit just an email uh, through the website. They can contact me. Uh, they can call our office at 863-284-0828. Uh, okay, a question from um, Mayor Mutz. Can you describe how Visti Ball is going to look this year? Uh, 
Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, Bill is, is one of those, and I think you have several on the call here today that are on our board or advisory board. Um, Joel is on our board, uh, Mayor Darlene, Rick Maxey, uh, Jack uh, Lohman, I don't know if he's there today. Um, but Visty Ball is our annual uh, fundraising event, and it's a very social, interactive event. Um, usually the first Saturday in February. It's not a dress up dance. Um, it's a very uh, social interactive golf themed event. If you've ever been to Chuck E. Cheese or Family Fun Center, it's like that for adults. Uh, there's prizes, there's games, there's uh, food, uh, there's beer, wine, and margaritas. Um, the last few years we've had uh, 700 or so people all in one place enjoying that interaction for um, what is now obvious reasons. Uh, having that type of activity uh, with that many people is really not possible this year. So we are gonna go to a virtual format and uh, create a, an experience, an interactive experience, if you would, uh, that involves a, an event that's gonna be uh, uh, taking place out of uh, Lakeland, uh, live the uh, the uh, studio downtown in downtown lakeland with nate fleming and then we're going to encourage people to have small group gatherings in their homes uh, or other places where they can be at a tv or computer and have the interaction that they uh, are looking for there uh, prior to that event which is going to be on february 6th of 2021 we have a week in advance, we'll have an online auction that will be available. Uh, we've done that for the past few years and a lot of people like to get in there and see what's going on and be able to bid on things in advance. That auction will continue up until February 6th, the night of the event. And then uh, the Monday prior, which is February 1st, we have what we call a Corporate Cup Challenge, which is a, a nine-hole golf tournament that is a competitive uh, event between uh, corporate sponsors. And they uh, compete not only for a golf trophy, but they also have their employees engaged in helping to raise additional funds to support the mission. So uh, another couple of ways to get people engaged in the community. And uh, anybody that's interested in finding out more about that, we also have uh, information up on the web. You can see the poster behind me was from last year. Uh, there's a lot of corporate sponsors and people that make that possible. Okay, thank you very much. I don't see any other questions. All right, thank you so much, Steve. Obviously, Visti and, and, and yourself are great friends to Rotary, so we're pretty comfortable with the services that you provide, and certainly we do support you. And, and thank you so much for coming to speak to our club. I've got this highly coveted book that I'm going to get to you. A little notebook that we like to give away to our speakers. Thank you. A token of appreciation. So thank you for taking time out of your day. Well, thank you all. And I hope that your delivery today goes really, really well. If you have some stories, please uh, share them with us. We love to share those out in the community. Is there a social media outlet or something that we can post to, Steve? If you post it on Facebook, we'll be happy to repost or Instagram. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks thank you. Bye-bye. Amanda, can you go through the roster of guests and visiting Rotarians, please? Uh, yes, I'd like to welcome um, Basil, Steve, of course, Mark Miller, and our visiting Rotarians, Doug McCall, and as, as well as those that are in the pipeline, Carol and John. I saw Steve Carey hanging out there, too. Steve, thanks for joining us, our assistant district governor. Appreciate you coming. Um, our weekly quote, if you can't feed 100 people, then just feed one. That's from Mother Teresa. Next week's program is Cantor Brown. He's going to talk about the life of Henry Plant. I've, we've had him in our club before, as I recall, and he does a really great job. And I just want to make a final announcement before we adjourn. I just got word that Darwin Milligan is at LRH in palliative care. So your thoughts and prayers for him, please. Uh, Absent any protest to the contrary, we'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week.